In the step 4 video, you got a glimpse of using a timer that is not directly supported by the software. In this video tutorial, we will go into some more depth on configuring the software to work with such a timer. This can be a commercial timer that is not on the supported timer list or can even be a do-it-yourself timer. For us to provide direct support for a commercial timer, we need to be in partnership with the manufacturer of that timer. This way, if the manufacturer makes any changes to their timers, they agree to notify us so we can make any applicable changes to the software interface. We also keep a timer on hand for each brand that we support. This allows us to test a timer interface for that timer anytime we need to make a change to the software that may affect that timer. However, some timer manufacturers prefer not to partner with us and others just have a very small presence in the market. Do-it-yourself timers can interface with the software as long as they comply with the interface information that we have published on our website's FAQs. To get to the custom timer interface, first open up the hardware settings screen. Now, select other serial timer from the timer tab. Then click on the custom settings button. On the custom timer settings screen, you would select the appropriate serial port settings, enter any commands that the timer supports, and any responses that the timer provides. For several of the commercial timers that we do not support, we actually have interface instructions posted on the Grand Prix Race Manager downloads page. If you have a non-supported commercial timer and don't see the interface instructions there, you will need to check with the timer manufacturer for appropriate settings to use. For a do-it-yourself timer, you will need to get the information from the timer's creator, if that is not yourself. We are not going to go into detail on each of the settings here. Each of these settings are documented on our website's FAQs under the Grand Prix Race Manager hardware section, as well as in the software's help file. Look for the link to that FAQ page in the video's description below. Once you have entered the appropriate settings into this screen, click on the Save button. Now, make sure to test a timer with the software. The video for Step 4 covers how to do that. This concludes this tutorial video on the custom timer interface.